Next up for repair is a Yamaha CR420 and supposedly one channel is out. So I turn it around and I can definitely see we have a problem at the speaker output here you're supposed to measure around zero volts basically almost nothing and here I'm getting 10 volts actually it's minus 10 volts and that's definitely a sign that something is wrong I just checked the other channel too and the other channel is okay so that is true there is a problem with one channel and here's the other channel as a contrast that channel seems to be okay so I guess I'll go ahead and start tearing this thing apart and before I go any further I need to go ahead and um, clean all of the switches and the pots for example this one right here I think the contacts are right back there then on down the line and then over here to the pots a lot of times they'll have little openings in them and then uh, spray in there work it back and forth a few times and um, and then that's it sometimes I forget to do this so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now I decided to hook up my audio generator and a dummy load and the oscilloscope to just take a look at the output signal and right now I'm feeding in a square wave right now at a, a thousand hertz square wave and here you can see the output wave this is actually not just the output wave but both of the waves here and you can see one channel is about half the height of the other channel and that seems to be the problem also I might add that the dummy load here because of the DC voltage going into these resistors here I got inside is getting nice and warm on one side here this side seems to be relatively cool but this side is toasty I guess the resistor is is hot um, good thing I didn't have a speaker hooked up to this So here is the what seems to be the actual problem. Initially, I was uh, troubleshooting up here at the this way, which is at, at the going toward the power output transistors. And what I noticed that the transistors, the collector voltage, I believe, was okay, and but the base and the emitter voltages were way off so I thought I had a problem with the resistor or capacitor somewhere in fact I would say I think I I don't recall exactly how many transistors are here but I think about six or seven transistors had the wrong voltage and then I when then what I did is I actually went from the other side of the board and I um, checked the resistance to ground until I came upon here and then of course I turned it over again then I noticed uh, this here I don't know why I didn't notice this right away this should have been one of the first things that I actually should have looked at so I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull this component here which is a electrolytic capacitor and then I'm going to clean this area up here and take a closer look at what I actually got. So here's the capacitor I just pulled. And it's reading about 150 microfarads. It's supposed to be reading 220 microfarads. At, and it's rated at 16 volts. I guess I could leave it in there. Since it's not really subjected to heat or high voltages. But And as far as I remember there are... There is a certain leeway when you're working with electrolytics, but if I have one laying around here, I am going to go ahead and swap it out before I continue on. Also, I did check this with the uh, ESR meter, and it is reading uh, too high. 
So I ended up making a little, um, basically a little bridge here using a component um, lead. I had to use the razor to expose the copper here and then I just, uh, well, just soldered it in there and that was it. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the other side and see, uh, uh, turn the receiver over basically and see what I am reading as far as resistance goes. So now we're going to do <clears throat> resistance measurements to ground again across the one resistor I think was R412 um, in comparison to the other channel the resistance measurements to ground this was a lot lot higher and hopefully that cleared up now I'm going to go ahead and measure from both sides of the resistor let me start with the good channel okay and the other one if we're lucky now should be almost the same or should be the same okay now we're going back to the good channel and doing the other side of that resistor the channel that was originally bad we're going to do that now and I'd say both about the same so I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and then go ahead and measure again for DC voltage at that one speaker output so I have the voltmeter now hooked up across the speaker outlet of the channel that was bad. That was reading minus 10 volts DC. Basically the channel was completely imbalanced. But it wasn't enough to uh, kick in the protection circuit. So hopefully this works. I'm going to go ahead and hit the on power switch now. And if not I'm going to be pissed. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, 56 millivolts. So, I think my next step is I'm going to actually do the um, bias adjust. So, that is next. So, in order to do the idling current adjust, we put the voltmeter across here. This is test point one. And test point two that's for one channel and on the other side is the test point three and test point four we do the same thing there so now I'm going to attach the voltmeter and then let this thing um, let this receiver warm up for a couple minutes say maybe five to ten minutes and then I'll go ahead and make the adjust and here's the actual pot I'm going to be adjusting right here you see I'm bringing the screwdriver tip pretty close and I think I'm supposed to adjust each channel for 30 millivolts okay I'm getting ready to make the adjustment now I've got my screwdriver down there and um, well I guess if you open one of these things up you may as well do this adjustment because the um, components tend to drift over time the values tend to drift so that's necessary or especially if you replace like a output transistor or something this needs to be done so I need to bring it up to 30 millivolts just a little bit a little bit here makes a big difference let me get my arm over here oh I think I'm going the wrong way hmm. Okay, well, I'm getting there. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get it. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other channel. There's the adjust for the other channel right there on my right below my finger and let me go ahead and do that now and this is the channel that I just saw uh, fixed again I'm going to bring this up to 30 millivolts of course it's reading minus here but I got just got the multimeter leads reversed so let me go ahead and bring this up to 30 
going the wrong way again. Okay, I'm getting there. So twenty seven and a half, twenty eight. A little bit more. Sometimes it's hard to make these adjustments because just a, a little bit, just a little turn, and you're already like wildly off. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, that's pretty close. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to readjust the other side and get that down to pretty close to what this is and then I'll go ahead and leave it at that. Well, I went back and redid the other side, so both channels are pretty much the same. We don't want it too low and we don't want it too high. So we want it basically right on the money, so let's go ahead and um, feed in a sine wave and then look at the output wave with an oscilloscope and that should be it with the amp section at least. So right now I'm doing a sine wave test. I'm just letting this thing run here at this output and so far everything's okay. So I might just do a little speaker hookup test and uh, then go ahead and check out the rest of the unit. And before I forget it, I just pulled another random capacitor. This one off the tuner board. Um, this is supposed to be a 220 microfarad capacitor rated at 16 volts and it's actually showing me around 125 uh, microfarads. I checked it with the ESR meter and it's showing okay but it's definitely lost uh, capacitance here and I suspect if I would go ahead and check more of these I would probably find up a lot of them that are uh, basically have lost their capacitance and using the heat kit here it's showing me about the same it's showing me about the same thing I just did that um, just to double check and make sure so again as I said I suspect that in this unit a lot of ca electrolytic capacitors have lost capacitance well most likely they would probably all have to be uh, changed out to bring it back up to spec but that would be around ch changing out about 40-50 capacitors and I don't want to. I don't know if I want to put the time and money into this thing since it's a little Yamaha CR420. It's probably not worth very much, and I don't know how long I'm going to be keeping this thing. I think if I would keep it for long term, then I would go ahead and do all that. Uh, do all that work.